Hi, I'm Amir Hossein Mirza Bozorg, and in this video, I want to talk about nonlinear dynamic analysis in Abacus Part 1. How to ask your video related questions. Don't hesitate to ask any questions you might have about the explanations presented in this video using the comments below. We try to answer all questions regarding the video details in the comments below. This is the table of content. I will talk about sources of nonlinearity, types of mechanical analysis, types of dynamic analysis, steps for conducting nonlinear analysis in Abacus, problem description, model definition, and finally comparing the results of linear and nonlinear analysis. Now I want to talk about sources of nonlinearity in a structural mechanics simulations. In these simulations, we have three sources of nonlinearity. Material nonlinearity, boundary nonlinearity, and geometric nonlinearity. About the material nonlinearity, if we define plasticity or hyperelasticity or temperature dependency, or rate dependency, we have defined material nonlinearity in the model. And about the boundary nonlinearity, it occurs if the boundary conditions change during the analysis, such as contact. And about the geometric nonlinearity, it is related to changes in the geometry of the structure during the analysis. Geometric nonlinearity occurs whenever the magnitude of the displacements affects the response of the structure. Generally, we have three types of mechanical analysis. A static analysis, dynamic analysis, and quasi-static analysis. About the static analysis, the summation of the forces is equal to zero and the system is in the static equilibrium. About the dynamic analysis, we have the second Newton's law and the system is in the dynamic equilibrium. And about the quasi-static analysis, the summation of forces is approximately equal to zero. Actually, this analysis is between dynamic and static analysis. And we have two types of dynamic analysis, linear and nonlinear. In the linear dynamic analysis, none of the sources of nonlinearity are included in the model, like frequency or modal analysis. And in the nonlinear dynamic analysis, one or more sources of nonlinearity are included in the model, like crash analysis, explosion analysis, ultrasonic process analysis, and machining process analysis. Now I want to talk about steps for conducting nonlinear analysis in Abacus. If we want to use Abacus standard solver, we must select dynamic implicit step. And if we want to use Abacus Explicit Solver, we can select Dynamic Explicit Step or Dynamic Temp Disp Explicit. This step must be used to conduct coupled thermomechanical analysis. Now I want to talk about comparing the results of linear and nonlinear dynamic analyzers. To compare the results of linear and nonlinear dynamic analyzers, two types of problems will be solved. When the geometric nonlinearity is not included or the NLGM is set to off, and when geometric nonlinearity is included or the NLGM is set to on, we will solve a problem using both procedures and compare the results. Moreover, the effect of the displacement value on the difference of the results will be investigated. To conduct the analysis, which is geometrically linear, the NLGM must be set to off, and to conduct the analysis which geometrically is nonlinear, the NLGM must be set to on. Now I want to describe the problem. Here we have a cantilever beam which is made of steel, and the length of the beam is equal to 1 meter, 
and this is the profile of the beam. And at the tip of the beam, we have applied a sinusoidal displacement control loading and its frequency is equal to 20 pi radian per second and we have applied four different amplitudes. Overall, we have defined and solved eight models using the dynamic explicit step. And in some of them, the NLGM is set to on and in some of them, the NLGM is set to off. Now I want to show you the abacus models. As you can see, here we have eight models. And here we have the cantilever beam. And this is the mechanical definition of the steel. And this is its profile. As we want to do a dynamic analysis, we must define density. And I have defined a dynamic explicit step. As the simulation is completely dynamic, I didn't define mass scale. And in this model, the NLGM is set to off. And here we have the field output requests. And here we have history output requests. And I have defined a geometric set from the tip of the beam uh, to request the displacement in the first and second directions. And I have defined a geometric set from the end of the beam to request the reaction forces in the first and second directions and the reaction moment in the third direction. There is no setting in the interaction module and there is no force control loading and I have defined two boundary conditions. The end of the beam is completely fixed. And I have defined a displacement control loading at the tip of the beam. And here I have defined an amplitude and I want to show you its settings. It is a periodic amplitude and its circular frequency is 20 pi and it starts from 0 and the initial amplitude is equal to 0. In the abacus, A is the coefficient of cosine terms and B is the coefficient of sine terms. So according to the name of this model, I have set the B equal to 0 0.01 and also here I have entered 1 and the multiplication of 1 and 0 0.01 is equal to 0 0.01 and this is the mesh of the model actually I have defined 20 elements along the beam. Now I go back to the slides. I will use the reaction force in the x and y directions and the displacement in the x direction to compare the results of linear and nonlinear analysis. Here I have plotted all of the four displacement control loads. As you can see, their frequency is the same but the amplitudes are different.
In the green curve, the amplitude is equal to 0.01. In the blue curve, the amplitude is equal to 0.05. In the orange curve, the amplitude is equal to 0.1. And finally, in the pink curve, the amplitude is 0.2. Now I want to compare the stress results at the end of the analysis. Here we have the result of the seventh model and in the seventh model the NLGM is off and here we have the result of eighth model and in the eighth model the NLGM is on. As you can see the contours are similar uh, but the shape of the beams are a little different and as you can see there is a difference between their phases which is because of the nonlinear effects now i want to compare the reaction forces in the y direction the red curve belongs to the seventh model and the blue curve belongs to the eighth model and as you can see the shape of the reaction forces are the same but also here we have the difference in their phases now i want to compare the reaction forces in the x direction the blue curve belongs to the seventh model and the red curve belongs to the eighth model and as you can see the result of the linear model is completely equal to zero but the result of the nonlinear model is not equal to zero and here we have the transient response and here we have the steady state response. Now I want to compare the displacement of the tip in the x direction. The red curve belongs to the linear model and the blue curve belongs to the nonlinear model. As you can see, the result of the linear model is equal to zero but the result of the nonlinear model is not equal to zero and here you can see a periodic behavior now i go to abacus to show you the results i go to the visualization module and i open all of the eight odb files And here we have all of them. Now I want to compare the displacement of the tip in the x direction for all of the eight models. As you can see here we have eight curves and four of them are equal to zero because they are the results of the linear models and four of them are not equal to zero because they are the results of the nonlinear models and here we have the periodic response also here we have a periodic response to make the model more realistic, we can add plastic behavior or define the mechanical behavior as rate dependent. So the Johnson Cook plasticity model can be a good choice. This is the equation of the displacement of tip of the beam in the y direction and this is the equation of its speed. So the speed of the tip in the y direction will be r omega cosine of omega t and according to this equation by changing amplitude 
and the frequency, the rate of loading changes. In the following tutorial, I will solve the model using the dynamic implicit step and compare its results with the results obtained by the dynamic explicit step. Also, the necessity and the procedure of applying a filter to the obtained results will be discussed in detail. We apply the filters to remove the numerical noises. You can contact me by Telegram or WhatsApp, or you can send email to me. We can have one-on-one -on -one tutoring on the AnyDesk WhatsApp, and we can make a special tutorials to your order, and we can conduct high-quality simulations for your thesis, exercises, and industrial projects. Now, I want to suggest you several related videos of our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a good time. Goodbye.